Hey everyone, this is Fidel Helper AJ Raven. I'm here with my reaction review of uh, the new Arrowverse show on the CW called Superman and Lewis. And yeah, this this show, even before it debuted, it ended up garnering a lot of controversy online, especially because of how the CW decided to treat uh, writer Nadria Tucker. Now, I'm not really sure if it's pronounced Nadria or Nadria. But yeah, Nadria Tucker, and we ended up interviewing her for the Geek Theory. Make sure to check that out. According to Tucker, she was fired from the CW show after she raised concerns about how how Superman and Lewis is treating its POC characters and how it's handling racism and sexism. And also, there was this thing where yeah, a bit. Just read the interview. It's very weird. It's very problematic. It's very bad. And I'm I'm actually happy that uh, Tucker ended up raising these concerns. And it's so weird. I'm like, after Natria, the interview came out. A lot of people were like, oh no, she is lying and all of that stuff. And I'm like, how can you support what happened to Ray Fisher while working on Justice League? How can you support that? But in the same breath, you also don't believe uh, Tucker. Like make it make sense. I have the episode with me and after and after what Tucker said, I am looking forward to seeing the problems that she ended up sharing and whether or not those problems do appear in the episode. So let's watch. So we are getting a quick flashback. Oh, he does look like a young Tyler Hecklin. He asked her to marry him. So I guess everything changed after the Arrowers. Okay, Hecklin's behind looks amazing in it. <laughs> Clark, I can't breathe! I can't breathe, Clark! It's too high! Okay, so Jordan is the, is the problem child, apparently, and I really hope one of the kids is queer because... Okay, so he has social anxiety disorder, but yeah, one of the kids has to be queer, otherwise it's like, why? Why not? Okay, come true CGI budget. Yeah, that's something that I don't like. Uh, that certain movies and TV shows do whenever they depict uh, Superman using his powers, like picking up and carrying this huge iceberg, that shouldn't be difficult for Superman. Why is he straining? This should be easy. He's able to pick up uh, mountains. You know what? It still makes no sense that they never saw it. <laughs> like this, they have been living with their dad and they didn't put two and two together. Like our dad is Superman, or that our dad looks a lot like Superman. Okay, so this is what happened. So Clark's mom died and now I guess the Kents are going to start living in Smallville for some reason. Okay, so at least we have some black people in Smallville. So there's that. Oh, come on. Why? Why add that? Wait. Wait. So... So both boys are straight? Come on. Yeah. Yep. Oof. Oh. Okay. I mean they have powers, right? I wouldn't be surprised if both both of them have powers. Wait. Aren't they supposed to be on top of each other? Clark's extra doesn't work properly. <laughs> yeah, they weren't like that uh, in uh, Clark's extra vision. Like, what's happening? Okay. Wait. So they're saying that Lewis is the one who's keeping him away from saving people? Why add these lines? I mean, these twins are supposed to be 14 years old, but they don't look 14. They look older. Okay. Where the heck are these two looking? One kid is looking somewhere else. Yeah, <laughs> the eyesight of an... <laughs> it should have been so easy. Both young actors. Look at this green ball. Look at this green ball. Where the heck are they looking? <laughs> and it makes no sense that their dad ended up taking off his glasses and they were like, Oh, you look like Superman. Like. Are you saying that they have never seen their dad without his glasses? Wow, so both of them are straight. Wait, what? Okay, okay, so the black kid is supposed to be the bully? Okay. And she didn't even tell him that she had a boyfriend for some reason? Is this 
spent money on the fight sequences, even though the villain looks like something from the Halo game series. Okay, so now Jordan is probably going to think that he's some sort of a monster. Now, what about his school? Yeah, he just made the team. Oh, okay, so the villain is the black man. And he's supposed to be some sort of, like, what, Captain Luther? Related to Lex Luther or something? So I'm looking at Tucker's Twitter account and she ended up tweeting a lot. She tweeted that we had lots of discussion in the early days about mental illness and how to depict it in the show. We talked about race too. We talked about gender and sexuality. We pitched so much blue sky stuff. All ideas generated by what was there in this pilot. Those early days were fun. We were actually meeting in person back then before the pandemic. I had a plan in my off. I had a plan in my office. The, uh, the sky was the limit. But then reality started to set in. Casting wasn't diverse. Lewis wasn't getting much story, so I raised these issues. This is part of the job. Uh, Todd Helbing uh, told me we'd have to ship black people in case there weren't any in Canada, which like. And Lewis' journalism stories were frequently deemed boring because they lacked superpowers, I guess. Yeah. You know what? I'll leave the link to Tucker's Twitter account down in the comment section below. And after watching this show, I can see where Tucker is coming from. I could see the, the issues that she talked about. And it's just, the show is just not for me. It's not for me. If you want to watch it, then go ahead. If, if you still want to watch it, I won't be watching it. I don't think that I can. I have the bandwidth for watching such a messy show. And it made no sense. So the kids found out that their dad is Superman and they didn't ask whether or not they are related to Supergirl. Like, what's happening there? Like, correct me if I'm wrong. I think that no one mentioned Supergirl. On a show about Superman, no one mentioned Supergirl. And she has been saving the world for like, what, five or six seasons now? It made no sense. The kids should have asked, like, is Supergirl supposed to be our aunt or something? But yeah, I will also be leaving the link to our interview with Tucker down in the comment section below. Uh, Jamie wrote a, wrote a review of the episode as well. I linked, I linked that too. But yeah, it's just... Uh, yeah, I, I really don't think that the show is going to get any better as the series uh, progresses. Uh, especially when it when it concerns uh, race and sexuality, because there was there's no reason for both Kent boys to be straight. There's literally no reason. Anyway, uh, let me know what you thought, and until next time, stay happy, stay safe, stay blessed. See you guys later. One last thought. I think that there's something up when it comes to writing Superman stories. I think the Superman brand is way too connected to the all-American born white guy trope. Because if you compare it to Batman, Bat even though Batman is straight, I don't think there is there even exists like no queer Batman exists in any alternate universe. So even though Batman is straight, uh, his rogue gallery has queer characters. Uh, his daughter with Selina is queer. Batwoman is queer and all of that stuff. However, when it comes to Superman, it's like. Uh, Clark always needs to be white, Lewis always needs to be white, their kids always need to be white, and all of these characters need to be straight. So I'm not really sure what's happening there and why certain uh, certain writers and the powers that be are hesitant when it comes to queering up the Superman side of the lore. But yeah, it's just a thought that I wanted to share. That like, may, as I said, because Helena can be queer, Batwoman can be queer, but when it, and Batwoman, like the new Batwoman is actually a woman of color. However, when it comes to Superman, everything has to be white, everything has to be cisgender, everything has to be straight for some reason. Like, what's happening?